I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I'd like to make one addition to our agenda tonight. We're listed as uh, item 1A, and what's on the agenda is item 1 will become 1B. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes uh, from the October 8th public business meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. This is the uh, addition to the agenda. Uh, as everybody knows, and a lot of people in this room knows, there's been a lot of talk about uh, funding for the new Allegheny, not just for the past couple of months, but for the past couple of years. Uh, what has happened is the state has offered a means for an extra $10 million to come from the state for the project, but what has to happen is the uh, Board of Education would have to send a letter requesting a rescission of the existing project and asked uh, to actually create a new project. That new project would be at the 8317 split. Uh, so it's uh, $10 million more from the state, but it's also going to be uh, additional funding from, from the county uh, going with this split. Uh, the, the most troubling part about this is the timeline, and it's the state's timeline. Uh, the county will be requested to uh, sign a letter, and in that letter it will be an acknowledgement that the county will support all costs not covered by the state. Now, this letter has to be signed in early to mid November so that the Board of Education can get this down to the state. Um, my, my only uh, problem with that is the new bids for the high school cannot be, the bid request cannot go out until after the 1st of January. So we're sort of being asked to um, write a blank check uh, we have no idea what this school is going to cost at this point. Uh, Board of Education, the engineers and all have been working to try to get this price down, but we don't know if it's going to be $60 million, $50 million, $55 million. Uh, the only firm number we have that the, um, the state's total contribution for this would be just a little bit shy of uh, $36 million. So we have drafted a, a letter that uh, I would like to have sent to Dr. Lever, to the Board of Education, and also to, um, to our, our local delegation. By the way, we have uh, Delegate Mike McKay present tonight. Uh, I'd like to read this uh, letter at this time. Uh, dear Dr. Lever, the Board of County Commissioners is in receipt of your October 20th, 2015 correspondence relative to the construction of the new Allegheny High School in Cumberland. As the IAC and the Allegheny County Board of Education continue to work through the tedium of evaluating scenarios to complete the construction of the new school, it is imperative that we com communicate with all parties Allegheny County's final funding commitment towards this project. As your office is aware, the Board of Commissioners has already borrowed $9.2 million for this project and has set aside $500,000 from state program open space as well. Of the funds the county has borrowed to date, approximately $806,000 has been advanced to cover a portion of the costs associated with the demolition of the former Sacred Heart Hospital campus and related site prep work. Based upon your office's projections and recommendations for project rescission and reapplication, the total amount of funds available from the state under the new 8317 split 
and the modified enrollment projections will be approximately $35.8 million, an increase of 35%. These funds, combined with local funding not yet spent for the design and site preparation, is approximately $44.7 million. The Board of County Commissioners has pledged substantial in-kind services to support this construction project by its willingness to design and partner in the construction of the athletic fields in the coming years. This commitment will save the Board of Education a minimum of $3 million on this project. In January of 2015, the County Administrator directed staff to assign $1.25 million from the county's fund balance as project contingency for the new school. At this time, the Board of County Commissioners will pledge an additional $2.75 million in future fund balance monies to the project, capping the total county appropriation for the construction cost at an additional $4 million. This additional commitment represents from county government a 43% increase above the amount already borrowed. Please note, county staff has carefully evaluated for our board all options to provide additional funding towards this project since the bids were opened on September 2nd. Given the volume of other project commitments looming through our community, the county is unable to borrow additional funds to support this project. Additionally, as presented during our meeting with you, the county will continue to reserve 20% of the gaming proceeds currently being reserved under its control from the local impact grant provided by the state from Rocky Gap through the end of fiscal, fiscal year 2019. It has been our intention that if these funds remain intact through FY 2019, they would be used by the board to provide new furnishings for the school. Although not guaranteed, it's possible that by the end of 2019, that $960,000 would be available from this revenue source, potentially increasing the county's total supplemental contribution to 51%. At this time, the county is only committing to a final number with regards to its total financial contribution towards this project. We have serious reservations about the prospect of being required to for fund a portion of this project, and we will we'll need to discuss this issue with you and your staff in greater detail in the near future. On behalf of the citizens of Allegheny County, we very much appreciate all the work that you and your staff, the IAC, have provided to our community towards this project to date and your keen interest in pursuing its success. We trust that in the coming weeks and months ahead that your staff and representatives from the Allegheny County Board of Education will be able to move through the bid process and hopefully award a contract to build a new Allegheny High School with the funds that are made available. Should you have any questions or comments regarding this correspondence, feel free to contact our offices at 301-876-9502. Gentlemen, I, I think this is uh, quite important. We are once again setting a budget level, um, showing the amount of money that Allegheny County is capable of contributing to this. One of the big problems with the bid openings not being until mid to late February, if our delegation is going to have to be looking for additional funds, which is evidently going to be a gap here, I think we all realize that, mid to late February is rather late in that legislative year to try to find millions of dollars. At that time, you find thousands of dollars. Uh, hopefully with this uh, and with the delegation talking with the Board of Education, get some sort of an idea of what type gap you're expecting might happen so that the delegation can start looking early on for additional funding to help fund this goal. Uh, at this time, I'd like to make a motion, gentlemen, that uh, we send a copy of this letter to Dr. Lever, to the Board of Education, and to our delegation. Do I have a second? So moved. Uh, do we have discussion? Sir, I guess I'll go first since I have another meeting just as soon as this one's over, I gotta get over to the airport and I was gonna save my comment to the end. 
commissioners, as you're both sitting here, I'm not going to support your letter. Because I was pretty firm in 2011 when we started this. I uh, picked the worst time in Allegheny County history financially, and we did everything we could to pull this off. Uh, the, the second reason is there, there's been a lot of talk in the community. Uh, I've, I've heard this from one end to the other, from Little Orleans to Old Town to all up and down George's Creek and even through LaVale. It, it's, this is going to be our last hurrah at building a process, and I keep telling everyone, I refer them because I, I have nothing but respect for the board members. You need to have this discussion with the school board members and all the county commissioners. We're just a funding agency. But, I, you know, when I, last week when the lady stood up and booed me or two weeks ago and this and that and they keep comparing this to Mountain Ridge, this is not Mountain Ridge. Mountain Ridge it was at the cost of four high schools. So, uh, you know, I ha and I know that, that, that every one of the board members, and I consider them, uh, I would call on them for anything, and they are excellent people, and there's no disrespect whatsoever intended. But uh, because of financial constraints, we got lots of infrastructure that needs replaced. You know, at the time when George's Creek went online, we strapped the, the, the hardest community in the state of Maryland with a large increase of a sewage treatment plant that then people are still paying for that we couldn't come up with any money to help offset some of that cost. And we got several more of them. We always got utility projects. And, and this right here will stretch our financial being for a long time. So, so that's, that's why and that's, that's it. So. I respect your statements, Creed, and I've been yeah. surprised if it would be anything but that you have been firm for the past few years. Uh, yeah. Jake? Good yeah, a, a couple of points um, and, and some clarification, I think. Um, you know, this is all about compromise and, and going through the process and, and trying to get everyone on the same page, even though we uh, we might have different views about stuff. So is, is the four million enough? Is it too much? Uh, you know, I, th I think we disagree on that. but. But I, I think that $4 million number brings the, uh, the total cost that we have for the school up to $48.7 million, assuming the, uh, the, uh, the change in formula. And, and, and that, that's really the big piece of this, because if we don't move forward with the change of formula, th this, this project's dead. Um, that, that's the only way this is going to happen, uh, is, is it's, it's going to take trust in, in the governor's office and our state government to, to forward fund that money. If, if we have to do that, um, so if if we if we go down that path, um, which I hope we do, you know, we, we have some answers or some questions that need answered, uh, we can get this done. And, and the other piece is our state delegation is going to have a uh, important role in this. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to uh, lay that out, but. I, I think that right now we can build a school. We can build a school and make sure it has enough classrooms. And uh, you know, are, are there some additions? Are there some add ones that we need? I think there are, um, but but I think a lot of that's going to be up to the state delegation. And so I, that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And, and I look forward to, to speaking with the board of ed members. We've we've had discussions before, and, and it's great to be able to do it in a in a public setting. So thank you. Yes, sir. Well, uh, First of all, I have to agree with much of what Jake said. You know, to get this school built, it's going to take a lot of cooperation from everyone. I know the Board of Education has been working hard to try to get this price down. Um, the cost of these overruns, it, it's strictly like we said about a lot of other things, unfunded state mandates. They want to tell everybody what you have to do, but they don't want to have to pay for it. Um, they keep saying that it's normal construction cost for next year. The IAC is going to list a school construction cost, I think something like 360 some dollars per square foot. That is not normal construction cost. I'm sorry. I know commercial construction cost. I know what we paid to build a heck of a nice sheriff's department over here, what it costs per square foot. Um, there's got to be something done at the state level. <coughs> And if there's not, I don't think you're going to be seeing schools built anywhere in the state. Uh, Frederick just went through this same problem. They just <coughs> voted to build a new high school that's quite a bit over their budget. But to be able to do it, 
they gave up two elementary schools, and they say those two elementary schools are unbelievably overcrowded. Start to look like a trailer park behind one of them with all the trailers they're using for classrooms. So one of the big ideas, two, two big things uh, behind this letter is we cannot commit to, to a blank check. You know, we're, we're being asked to sign a letter of commitment in November with no way of knowing what number is going to be filled in on that check come February or March. Uh, plus, this gives, with us putting in a firm number, the state has put in a firm number. Right now, that pretty well gets us to the base price of the school without any add-ons. And if things can be massaged down, that's going to help it. But I really think that the um, our delegation cannot be asked in the middle or the end of February, hey, guys, go find a seven, $7 million. By that time in Annapolis, everybody's been asking for money and been grabbing up money that's available. So I think our delegation needs to have these numbers up front, get some sort of a, a feel for what what this hole is going to be, and let them start early, possibly even before session, starting to see where can we find some, some funds. Their difficulty is going to be, just about every other county in the state is going to be looking for the same type of funding. I know, um, I know of at least three other counties that don't know how they're going to build the schools. They know they need the schools, but you know, nobody has the money to meet the state demands on the cost of the school. Um, so, gentlemen, we have a uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. We know where you're at. Good enough. Okay. 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 Uh, sign that, yes. Okay, while that letter is being signed, we'll move along. Uh, we'd like to introduce Ms. Miranda Kessel, the new Communications and Public Affairs Manager at Verso Corporation, also known as the Luke Mill. Good evening, Commissioners. Sir. Nice to see you. Um, as you know, uh, I'm here tonight to introduce Miranda. She's the new, or relatively new, Communications and Public Relations person at the Verso Paper Mill. Um, I just want to say a few words, and many of you know this, in, in my 26 years with the county, we've had nothing but a fantastic relationship, I believe, not only from an economic development side, but from a county-wide um, side in terms of a great relationship with the mill, whether it was West Vaco, um, Verso, or New Page. And um, through those years, um, I, I've got to work with um, some of you who have been around long enough, probably remember Harris Lafew. Um, Harris was a, a PR person for many years, and then, uh, as you know, my, my good friend Patsy Kuntz um, had that role for many years as well. Patsy recently retired, and uh, Miranda has been brought on board to uh, assume those duties, and uh, Commissioner Valentine and I had the uh, privilege to go to the mill with uh, Secretary Mike Gill, um, Commerce Secretary Mike Gill, about a month ago. And uh, the welcome we received there was, was uh, splendid, and just uh, we couldn't ask for more. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to ask Miranda to come up and uh, just introduce herself and say a few words. <coughs> welcome, Miranda. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys this evening, uh, Commissioner Valentine, Commissioner Brody, and Commissioner Shade. So uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, as you know, as you've heard, my name is Miranda Kessel. I'm the new uh, Public Affairs and Communications Manager at the Luke Mill. Um, just to g give you guys an introduction to myself and to the new owners, Verso Corporation. Um, while the, the mill has many new faces and uh, a new logo, um, our new owner, Verso, is absolutely committed to continuing the long legacy and the strong partnerships with Allegheny County and the surrounding region. Um, the community partnerships that we have today are attributed to all Luke Mill's past and present employees, um, including my predecessor, Mrs. Patsy Koontz. Um, I'm pleased to continue that goodwill and those strong partnerships that uh, Mrs. Koontz cultivated during her years of service at the Luke Mill. And 
I look forward to working with you guys. Um, also, I can give you guys just a little bit of a quick update if you if you would like. Please do. Okay, thank you. Um, so, as you guys are in the business of, of making tough decisions, like you guys are are, are here tonight doing. Um, the paper industry is also shares with you in, in uh, making a lot of tough decisions every day. Um, Verso is committed to position the loop mill against the strong market headwinds uh, by increasing its efficiency through process improvement and cost savings while making strategic and sustainable capital investments. Uh, during our mill-wide outage in August, uh, Verso invested millions of dollars of capital improvement into, uh, into making enhancements um, and investments at the mill. Um, and that's more than what's been made in the last several years. Um, one of those specifically is was a $5.1 million investment to replace the superheater roof and the scrubber tubes of our recovery boiler. Um, by making that investment, um, it's vital to our future and our long-term sustainability. So I just wanted to share that quick update with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Busy couple weeks you've been. Yeah. Well, Miranda, I'd like to say that I know Allegheny County is absolutely uh, committed to the mill as much as the mill is to us because we love our mill. And we know that it makes the best paper of any mill in the, in the world, including the Chinese paper, and I know that's because you, you guys have the best employees of any paper mill in the world. So thank you very much. Thank you. Right. We're here anytime you need our help. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. And I will add in my uh, very short tenure there, I will I, I'm, my takeaway from my short time there is my favorite thing so far about working there is, in fact, the people. So thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Okay. Miss Sierra Wigfield. Right and forward, please. <laughs> uh, Sierra's here to talk about uh, Allegheny County uh, hazardous household waste collection event. Yeah, so um, on Saturday, October 10th, um, at the Allegheny County Fairgrounds, we held our uh, household hazardous waste event, which was our first in seven years. Last one was in October 2008. Um, at the event, we had 112 cars come through, and they collected a total of 4,260 pounds of household hazardous waste um, and this year we're under budget so I haven't had a final invoice but um, it was under our budget and um, based on event <coughs> surveys 76% uh, of people that attended were first timers at household hazardous waste events and we asked if they would be willing to dispose like pay a little extra to dispose of paint because this time we didn't collect paint um, and 71% of this attendance said they might be willing to do that um, so it's our hope to have another event in the fall of 2017 in two years. Um, previously there was a two-year cycle of these events. Um, in the meantime, uh, there's some items that can be disposed of year-round in Allegheny County. For example, antifreeze, which we collect here at Penmar Recycling Center and at the uh, Mountain View uh, Drop-Off Center, uh, take antifreeze there and oil. Um, and at the Household Hazardous Waste event, we collected 358 pounds of antifreeze. So I don't know if people had that sitting around and they didn't know about the collection, but in the future, um, they can take it any time. <laughs> uh, and then oil, we have that at the recycling centers at Mountain View Landfill, and it also at their Old Town and Flintstone refuse sites. Fluorescent lights um, can be recycled at Penmar um, whenever they're open, and they're a dollar, flat rate of a dollar per tube and medications, uh, which we didn't accept at the event, but they can be taken to um, the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office, the Cumberland or Frostburg Police uh, Department, or the State Police Barracks in LaVale. So those are safe places to dispose of medicines. Um, for the other items, I ask people to store them in the original container with labels and keep them out of reach of children and pets. And uh, to consider replacing toxic pesticides and um, cleaning products with less toxic alternatives. Uh, reduce the amount of household hazardous waste you purchase, so purchase only what you need. Um, and then also, whenever it's time to dispose of the things that are no longer effective or needed, save them for the next household hazardous waste event or take them to the appropriate drop-off locations. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Allegheny County Commissioners, the City of Cumberland, the City of Frostburg, the Town of Lonaconing, NEFCO, 
Advanced Disposal and Waste Management, uh, as well as the Allegheny County Solid Waste Management Board, whose next meeting is November 4th in room 212 in this building at 4 o'clock. Um, and that's the recap of that event. Is there a tar recycling date in our future? I hope so. I know um, we did that a couple of years ago, and I can remember fall. that was a miserable day, and that place was packed. I hope I hope to have another one. I actually was in touch with MDE today, and it sounds like mm -hmm. fiscal year 17, 18, they might have funding for that. So, okay. well, thank you. Well, Sierra, before you step down, I do know that we want to recognize someone that's with us in the room tonight. Would be Commissioner Woody Getz from the City of Frostburg, because I know he's just beaming with pride back here <laughs> with all the work with this, because I know that. That he takes this very seriously and has been yes. a good member of the Solid Waste Board. So yep. I'd Sorry, like yeah. to recognize Commissioner Get or Commissioner Getz here this evening. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And while we're doing introductions, I'd also like to introduce Mr. Mark Whitmire, who's been a longtime friend here, who was recently appointed as the Western Maryland representative for Governor Hogan. It's finally official. So, congratulations, Mark. Wow. Mr. Wooden? Um, I got a question. Where can we dispose of uh, these little butane bottles that were used for soldering? Or, or, I, I've been looking, trying to find some place for years. That, the household uh, hazardous waste event, we collected those that day. So, if you don't mind hanging on to them, I think you might be able to call Penmar and see if you could take them I've there. I've called around every place. Okay. That, uh, you know, we can find stuff. Nobody had, and I happen to know there must be hundreds of thousands of them going into the landfill because a lot of people take on one around their house and they just don't, you know. Yeah. But, well, uh, I do know that to dispose of them, they had to be drilled. So somebody's going to have to drill them to make sure that they're uh, safe. Huh. And, uh, but I think you should maybe concentrate on that. Or maybe Sarah can check on that and sure. get back to Mr. Yeah, Wilma. but Thank we did you. take them at the Household Hazardous Waste yeah. event. So. Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay, uh, now we'll have what I think is going to be a rather good report on uh, Allegheny County paper gaming the fiscal year. Mr. Joy. Mr. Joy, front and center. Mm -hmm. Looking in the wrong area of the room for you. <laughs> no problem. With that tie, I should have seen you right away. Commissioners, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present the uh, closing numbers on the fiscal year report 15 for the paper gaming office. And you're correct, we do have some positive uh, feedback this year. Budget projections for the fiscal year 15 was 331,000. We closing was $369,376. So we actually come in with a surplus of $38,376. Gaming revenues were up 5% from fiscal year 14. Over a five year period, we're still down 29%. If you average it out over a five year period, we're still down 29%, which equates to about $76,000 per year. Breakdown, uh, the club revenues were up slightly 4%. Taverns were up 33%, convenience stores up 25%, liquor, sto liquor stores were down 21% from fiscal year 14. Funds allocated to the Board of Education were $174,011, FAR companies $58,004. This is down from $135,000 from fiscal year 09. Operating expenses for the paper gaming office was $137,362, which is down last year from $491. We, had, we operate on 2.5 uh, employees in the uh, gaming office, and that's the inspector, which is part-time. We're still waiting on our final impact from Rocky Gap. Uh, projections were that we would take an additional 20% hit in our revenues. And we were declining for a while, but in the last two years, we've sort of stabilized that downward spiral. And uh, right now, we seem to be holding our own. One note is that we'll, I don't think we'll ever be projected to go back to the fiscal year 0809 numbers. Okay. 
At the end of the first quarter of fiscal year 16, we're trending to be on target of $332,000 for fiscal year 16. Uh, this report will be online as of this evening. Anybody wants to check it online, it's uh, gov.alconet.org. The entire presentation is there. Two, two or three other just minor notes. Since fiscal year 04 to present, uh, the Allegheny <coughs> County government has provided $3.5 to the Board of Education for capital projects and $1.1 million to the fire companies. On the average, we have 70 licensed paper gaming operators, which is up and down, uh, but the operators, 34 of that 70 are not-for-profit, which is a 10% base, and 36 are for-profit, and that's the 40% base. So we're holding our in presently. Okay, if, if I'm not wrong, I think the veterans uh, groups are now allowed to use the electronic uh, yes, gaming machine. They are. Now, does that go through county, or is that strictly yeah, that state control? The Maryland Lottery Commission. That's strictly that's state control. control. Yeah, they, yeah, I know that. That's something they actually passed that legislation like three years ago, and just finally got around to coming up with the rules and regulations. Yeah, presently there's only two VFWs that even have them. The rest of them express no interest in obtaining them. Yeah. I think that was probably back to 08 when that left. Yeah. Out. Okay. Well, thank you. Very good. Thanks, Jerry. Okay. Uh, our action agenda item four. Uh, Mr. Mark Yoder, Locust Grove Pump Station Engineering Firm selection and PPG grant application. Hello, commissioners. Sir, if you can believe this, I'm here to talk to you about sewage again. Anything, All right. Anything All I right. to talk about. Uh, we do a lot of that around here. Yeah. Uh, as, as you're aware, Allegheny County is under consent order in several of our districts. Uh, one of them is the Jennings Run District. And we had hired uh, a firm called GHD, formerly Stearns and Wheeler, to do a soil, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a sanitary sewer evaluation study, which is the first step uh, to solve a lot of the problems. As part of that, it identified a lot of sewage work that needed to be done and also a couple pump station upgrades. We've done, uh, so far, all the, the, the line work, we've done the engineering ourselves, but when we get into the pump stations, we, we had to go out to get an engineering firm for that. Uh, and we've been very happy with, with GHD. Uh, USDA, our funding uh, partner, has a uh, program that's a preliminary planning grant where they offer 75% funding up to a maximum of $30,000 to prepare the preliminary engineering report, which is the first step for their funding process to get the money for the construction. So what I'm looking, would like to get approved today would be the selection of uh, GHD to do the upgrade, uh, the preliminary engineering report for the Locust Grove pump station. Uh, it still has the original 1975 equipment, so we've definitely gotten our money's worth out of uh, that station it's in, in pretty dire need of an upgrade so we would like to propose modifying GHD's contract to do this work and also uh, for the uh, commissioner to sign the funding applications for USDA for the grant gentlemen any questions none do we have a motion so moved second all in favor Aye. all right thanks a lot Mark thank you Mr. Everly, our consent agenda. Uh, commissioners, uh, it's only a single item on your agenda this evening, and it relates to a, a surplus vehicle that uh, we would like to receive from you a declaration of surplus four on behalf of the sheriff's office. Uh, one slight modification to what's listed in your agenda is, is that the uh, uh, sheriff will uh, have a public auction on this vehicle as a backup plan and offer the vehicle, if you declare a surplus, to the uh, Little Orleans Volunteer Fire Company, who may have a need for this vehicle as a modified chase vehicle. So that's the uh, that's the extent of our consent agenda this evening. Well, we have a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, you can close your time. Great. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. President, I hate to do this, but I need to excuse myself so I can. Well, back to life. <laughs> yes, sir. Catch you later. Commissioner. Uh, 
Mr. Ebley, we had a bid open. Well, we did on Tuesday, and uh, hopefully in two weeks we'll be in a position to award a contract uh, for the completion of the Route 36 uh, Water and Woodcock Hollow Route 47 project uh, with the Department of Public Works. Thank you. Uh, County Attorney. Nothing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We always like to hear that. Uh, Jake, you have any further I'll, statements? I'll save mine until afterwards. Okay. I have no, uh, no further statements other than to say uh, about, uh, I guess about two weeks ago, I, I was talking to the gentleman. We were talking about county business and all. And he said, you know, you need to get your fellow commissioners under control. You guys have too many two-to-one votes. <laughs> and my comment was to him, number one, nobody's going to control the votes of my fellow commissioners. And number two, I'm rather glad we have two-to-one votes. It shows people voting their convictions, voting the way they feel rather than rubber stamping something. So uh, I'm very honored to serve with people that, that vote, vote their, their, their hearts and their convictions. Uh, now we have several people signed up uh, to speak this evening. The sir first is Sarah Beth Bittinger, not even Sarah Beth James Dash Bittinger. I couldn't do a double first name and a double last name. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Allegheny County Commissioners. My name is Sarah Beth Bittinger. I live at 17900 Old Dan's Rock Road in Midland, Maryland. I've always wanted to say that because I listen to people say their address. I have been an elected board member of the Allegheny County Public Schools since 2009, and my former name was Sarah Beth Bittinger, which you all know that. Um, I am here tonight to respectfully request the County Commission to support the school board's request to rescind the original approved project funding for the Allegheny High School replacement, which requires a letter of support from the county government, which um, I'm very pleased and happy to um, hear the, at the beginning of the meeting that um, you have put together a letter, I haven't got to read it all, but um, that you are committing four more million dollars to this project. Thank you. I'm going to continue with my comments and because I really um, am here tonight to promote collaboration and um, and, and spirit of moving this project forward together. Um, so with the 93.7% funding for 2014, uh, with this new funding formula, we would, um, as you're all aware, stand to receive an additional $10 million from the state under the 2017 funding formula of 83.17. This increase in nearly $10 million is due to the state's realization that construction costs have skyrocketed in recent years, as well as a projected higher enrollment. As I know that you know, you are fully aware this project will bring jobs for our local craftsmen who will spend money in this community. $35 million of state money will provide an attraction to our area that will promote economic growth and most importantly, give our community an option, meaning if our population plummets and we are forced to look at consolidating, we have two modern educational facilities. Right now, if we would have to consolidate, we would send millions of dollars back to the state and put up trailers at Fort Hill and Mountain Ridge and most likely fund additions that would be totally paid for with local funds. I'm gonna reference the letter that was sent to the commissioners, <clears throat> I believe at like 3 p.m. today. Um, on page three of that, um, we keep talking about a number and we don't know the number as you're well aware we're in the bidding process um, from the information that we do know the lowest bid came in at 47 million um, the additional classrooms is 1.2 million and the lowest um, at alternate bid for the auditorium was 5.7 so top paragraph page three um, this this that totals up to 54 million dollars um, if you do the plus and pluses of the additional funding opportunity with the state, your $4 million, which is very much appreciated, um, it would basically leave a shortfall of $2.8 million, give or take some change, some big change. And I know that this is very hard on the county, and I know that um, resources are very limited. I know that we all agree that we need a new high school. Allegheny High School is the oldest high school in the state. Let's mention the term economic development that has been thrown around in every conversation associated with why this project is a great idea. 
What does an additional household in the county mean to the county's coffers? How do we grow the existing tax base? We must add value to what we have in order to offer it in, excuse me, we must add value to what we have to offer in terms of educating our children. I value this commission's efforts to reduce the debt service and applaud the value of placed in educating our local community with funds for scholarships and, co and school construction funds set aside from the Rocky Gap Casino funds. I also appreciate the local funding you've already committed to this project, which is $9.2 million and your offer to help with the fields and to support um, and your also your support of the additional open space funds. I am very proud to be a responsible and physically conservative. I am very proud of the responsible and physically conservative efforts of the Board of Education for this project and the numerous cost cutting measures that the board and the design committee have ta painfully taken through this entire design process in order to keep this project a reality. I also appreciate the county's staffing time that you have supported by allowing them to be part of the design team and process. For the record, the county does not have to front $10 million under this new funding option. There is not a swimming pool in this building or a television studio. In fact, if you look at the design, there are 45 classrooms that are the exact match to the operations that ha happened on Sedgwick Street today. I'm here tonight to ask you to support the project within the scope of this new funding option we must take advantage of the additional $10 million and the, for, and the additional square footage. I ask for your continued support in the form of coming to the table to discuss additional funding options to help us fill this funding gap. I believe that we as le elected officials can partner for the greater good for our entire community. I am not asking the county to make irresponsible decisions and that are not in the best interest of our financial infrastructure. My last request is that we walk the walk or for Commissioner Brody, ride the four-wheeler or run this marathon together. I am realistic and physically conservative member of this community, and I ask that we move forward together on the same page with the same information and the same numbers as we lead together. Together, we must invest in this new school so that it lasts and fulfills providing an economic space for generations to come. Thank you. I would suggest we let you ride the four wheeler and we'll let Craig run your next marathon for you. I don't know if he'd agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's not here. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you very much, all of you, for um, coming together and helping us with this project. I, I have everybody's cell phone number and you have mine, so let's keep it moving. Great. Uh, Dr. Edward Ruby. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I feel a little bit like I got to the party late and the party's already over for, uh, as a result of your initial action this evening, but I think some of my comments are still relevant, so if, with your approval, I will go ahead and give them. I would also, before I start, like to tell you we're deeply appreciative of the additional support. Uh, it will go a long way toward making this project happen. I'm here this evening to ask you to join with the Board of Education financially and in spirit to accomplish a project that's in the best interest of Allegheny County, bringing to fruition the construction of an antiquated, of a new high school replacing an antiquated high school. This is a project that's absolutely necessary. As we're all cognizant, the issue is money. Uh, Commissioner Valentine, you were present here uh, a couple of months ago when I spoke before Secretary David Brinkley, and I made the point that the present process at the state, the way school construction is funded, puts an unnecessary burden on county government. You are caught in the middle between the Board of Education and the state, and it's not your fault and it's not our fault. Money is the issue. Every county in the state of Maryland which has a major education project Got a shock when bids came in. Not only were they over budget, but they were exorbitantly over budget. Still, as you approve tonight, we cannot give up on this project because the project can be completed. So in order to make this happen, let's see where we are. We start with a figure of roughly $59 million, which was the low bid for the complete Allegheny High School. We have cash on hand of about $35.2 million. 
Now, what I'm going to do is walk you through and try to close that gap, top down, bottom up. We have met with the IAC, and they've been very cooperative and received their suggestion to rescind the funding for the current project in favor of a new project with increased funding. This can be done quickly and relatively easily by funding it under FY17 formulas. We dropped from 93% of allowable cost to 83%, which doesn't seem favorable, but it is. We go from $215 a square foot to $282 a square foot, and further, the projected student enrollment seven years out goes from 719 students to 782 students. And that is the primary difference in the formula because it increases the square footage that is allowable. Between the increase in dollars per square foot and student projections, we gain approximately $10 million and an additional 10,000 square feet. The site development costs increased 19% from 12%. Staff from both the county, Mr. Patterson and Mr. Call, as well as the Board of Education have met with the four of the five bidding contractors and have targeted potential savings of an additional $2 million. That drops the top down to about $57 million. The $10 million on the bottom goes, puts us a little bit over $10 million, or $45 million. The gap uh, is now about $12 million. The lowest bid was actually less than $59 million, a little. That, with the $2 million in potential cost savings, becomes the target for the next round of bidding. We would expect a more favorable bid the next time because of that. We also th would expect that since they know what the low bid was, that becomes the target and potentially would be a lower bid. You can't guarantee that. But logic says it's very likely. Deferring the construction of the athletic fields initially, they'll still have to be done, as was done in the case of Mountain Ridge, and perhaps, as you have offered, using the workforce of the county government, as well as our own in-house staff, will reduce the initial cost by three and a half million. You've also generously offered $500,000 in open space money toward the construction of these fields. And we're appreciative of that. At this point, we have a gap of about eight and a half million, not making any allowance for a round of lower bids. It's my firm belief that with your financial participation in the amount of about seven million dollars, this project is extremely viable. Your earlier action closes that gap significantly. Seven million dollar figure is not ephemeral. It's based on the approximate cost of two essential elements to the project the nine additional classrooms without which the school couldn't open. Because we have something like 12 teachers without classrooms, we have more kids than we have classrooms that they can contain. So without those nine classrooms, it's just not viable. The other essential is the auditorium, about five and a half million dollars. So between the classrooms and the auditorium, that's where the seven million dollars comes from. It's going to be very difficult to make decisions without those two elements being built into the thinking. There is also the possibility of some additional money from the support and effort of our legislative delegation, which has been supportive throughout this process. I factor none of that into the figures. That's an unknown. The actual bids are a little bit unknown. I would tell you when I first came onto the board, one of my first early actions was to defer the construction, renovation of Washington and Braddock in favor of making Allegheny High School the number one priority. And that was done primarily because three major projects by the school system would put the county in an untenable position. So in exchange for a commitment from your predecessors, commissioners, we put all our eggs in one basket. In summation, the Board of Education would like, at its November 10th meeting, to take the necessary votes to enable it to obtain the additional $10 million. This cannot be done without a letter of support and commitment from you to this proposal, which you have done in your earlier action. Include, it does not need to include necessarily a precise dollar commitment. 
but would require an intent to complete the project. 